Okay, hey everyone, it's Wally Dellenbach, and uh, this is all about buffing a bass drum. I got a question from Rich Sheehan on the uh, Facebook uh, Ludwig Vistalite page. And um, he's asking me a question that sounds like about uh, buffing a bass drum, a Vistalite bass drum, and how the bass drum in its unassembled state has a tendency to flex. Okay, you want to be really careful when you're doing a bass drum, any size, uh, 20 inches, 26, whatever your, your bass drum size is. Um, uh, in its free state, the, the drum's going to want to flex. So if you're coming up here at the 12 o'clock position and you put force up here, uh, the drum's going to kind of start to squash. You don't want to do that because you don't want to give any opportunity to uh, crack your shell. Okay. Now, what I do typically if I, I buff a bass from a shell, um, of course, I like doing it in my lap. Of course, you want to work on it, and I've got a lot of experience doing it, so that's just how I do it. This, of course, isn't a Vistalite shell. It's a Ludwig 14 by 22 stainless steel shell. Um, this is going up from to a friend of mine named Seth Beckham. So, Seth, it's on its way. I'm going to pack it tonight. And so... Typically, if I, I buff a shell, uh, like a bass drum, I've got a towel in my lap, a uh, bathroom towel. Uh, you're going to get dirty, so wear some work clothes. And uh, so here we go. Now, what I like to do is, is I'll, I'll hold it in my lap. And the reason why I like to do that is because I, I do that to let my body absorb the vibration. I can feel what's going on with the shell. Okay, put my left hand through like so. And this is my workspace, all right? So I've got my buffer, 5-inch orbital buffer. And uh, it's kind of nice because I can come over here, set the buffer down. Of course, you want to have some kind of cradle maybe to put your buffer in. You can keep more control of it. Remember, you don't want to drop your buffer on the ground and pick up contaminants that would come back and scratch your shell. So always try to keep your, your buffer sitting in an upright position to where you can apply uh, your rubbing compound or your polishing paste. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Novus, Novus, Nuvo, who gives a crap. It's really good stuff. It's made for acrylics and plastic. Um, highly recommend using it. Okay, so uh, whatever state your drum's in, depending on how deep your scratches are, um, you'll work from, this is three, this is for heavy scratches, two is for medium to light scratches, and then number two is just kind of like a spray on polish. It's kind of neat, it's anti-static, um, which means that the dust won't attract to your acrylics, okay? So, once again, we don't want to come here to the top of the shell and press down because we don't want to crack it. And really, we're kind of losing control up here. Um, we've got better feel down here. Now, the reason why I like working like this is because um, I get a sense of feel and I can see what's going on with the shell, all right? You want to do it in a well-lit environment. Um, of course, you want to have air moving because this, this Nova stuff, it does turn to, to kind of like a, a powder state. So when it starts to dry and you're getting, you're, it's kind of, there's a film paste over it and you can see it. And when it's, when it's kind of um, developed, I guess, if you will, and done its work, it starts to dry out and turn into like a baby powder and it'll float off of your... So, <clears throat> of course, I would recommend maybe even using a dust mask. Uh, do it in a well vent ventilated or um, where you have air moving through, okay? Because if you're going to work this close, you know, take care of your body, okay? Be safe. Now, <clears throat> so, got my buffer, and typically I'm, I'm working in, I've got a pattern going, okay? Now you can come here from halfway to your shell out, and then uh, later turn, once you go around the drum 360 degrees, turn your shell around and work this way. Now, your your own personal workspace when you do stuff like this is defined by you, okay? Everybody's going to get their technique, their tricks, their tips, or whatever. Um, that's cool, all right? This is just a, a tip on how how I do the bass drums, okay? Uh, first time I did it, I remember I had it sitting on the floor, and it was on a rug, and I threw a, a bathroom towel on it. Um, but it just seemed kind of, it, it was physically hard to do it, okay? It was kind of uncomfortable, and I didn't seem... This is the best way that I found that I, I have a lot of control when I buff the shell. Okay? Now, so that takes care of the shell on the outside. Now the inside, um, when you buff the inside, it'll be the same thing. So um, you'll typically bring your buffer in like so, 
and you can come down here now and work down in your lap, okay? Come bring your left hand in here, hold on to the bass drum, and work your area, okay? Be deliberate, take your time, um, you know, it's, this is, when you do a project like this, it should be one and done, you know, you really should never have to come back and revisit it again, all right? So, <clears throat> that takes care of the outside diameter, your inside diameter buffing. Now, when you go to buff your, your um, bearing edges, um, that's when I recommend that you set it on a table because um, you, can, you can actually get up here and, and work your buffer a little bit better, okay, to, to your um, bearing edge. You don't really want to do your bearing edge when it's sitting in your lap because it's kind of hard to control. You really, you know, you can come up here in your face and kind of, but you'll have better control if you sit it on a table, okay? Um, if you got yourself maybe like a one inch sheet of foam board that, uh, you know, for construction purposes, throw a towel up on top of it. Uh, if you do it in a, you know, have a good workspace, like I said, well ventilated and, uh, cause it's going to make a mess, all right? Have good work clothes that you can get dirty and throw in the wash. So, uh, that's pretty much it, all right? So with that, I hope I answered any questions. Um, oh, I want to cover one more thing and then I'll sign off. Um, as far as wet sanding your shells, and um, don't get too carried, you know, I, and I don't even recommend it, all right? If you see a, a, a scratch, um, you know, you'll, you should be able to buff out heavy to medium to light scratches with the Novus um, buffing paste. Um, things like where you see a uh, hi-hat rash, you know, where a hi-hat's cut into a small tom up here on your upper left-hand side. Um, yeah, you can do that. I don't recommend it. I'm not going to advise you to do it because um, it can cause crazing. Okay, and I've got a video on crazing and you don't want to really do that. Alright, so be careful. Um, they're your drums, of course. Do with as you will. But if you're going to be, once again, I'll, I'll reemphasize, you're going to put a lot of work into doing something like that. So when you see um, a set of drums, uh, Vistalite drums or acrylic drums, and you can buy them for a song, and, but they're all scratched up, and you're going to do this a, a boatload of work trying to restore them, you might want to think of just about maybe buying a new set, um, because the time, effort, material, um, the opportunity maybe to wreck a drum, is too too great you know um, the, the things that I've passed on to you in all these videos that I've done are through years of experience and um, I've wrecked my share of acrylic drums I'm sorry to say that but in doing that I, you know, I've, I've gained a lot of experience and I'm willing to pass it on to you so you don't make the same mistake okay so with that um, if you guys got to ever have any questions uh, you can contact me through Facebook Wally Dellenbach in Delphi Indiana uh, gosh, we'll, we'll talk, I'll talk to you all day about uh, Vistalite drums and how to take care of them and how to play them and pass some tips on to me even, okay? Um, I, I love talking to the drummers, the drumming com community, and uh, it's, a, it's a blast, okay? I'm a drum nerd. My wife calls me a drum geek, so and that's okay with me. So until next time, you guys be cool, take care, and uh, sign off till the next time. Peace.